Hi guys, we're going to spend two days on section 6-1. So today I am going to show you how to do the first 31 odd problems, okay? So for tonight, <clears throat> I want you to work on these problems. There's what, 15 or 16 problems in there? Okay, before we start, we need to review the reciprocal key on your calculator. Now, if you have a calculator like I have, this is your reciprocal key. All right, it's x to the negative 1. Now, some of you might have a different calculator. Other calculators have reciprocal keys that look like this, 1 over x. Now, if you don't have either one of those keys on your calculator, that's okay. If you're going to take the reciprocal of something, what you would do then is you would tell the calculator you're raising it, so you would use your exponent key, and then your exponent would be to the negative 1, and that's what this key does, all right? All right, so we are going to be taking reciprocals of numbers today, so actually of functions, so I wanted to quickly review that. All right, let's look at 6-1. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please read your book, all right? I am going to show you how to do the problems, but there's going to be a lot of why does this happen, all right? And the whys are in your book. Now, what we're going to talk about today, we're going to talk about uh, finding the inverse of a sine, cosine, or a tangent. And the first thing that we're going to work on, we're just going to look at sine. So I want you to get out a highlighter. Just highlight this. We're going to talk about the range of the inverse um, sine function. It's restricted to only quadrants 1 and 4. So today, when you do sine problems, you know, here's our unit circle. We are going to be here, or we're going to be down here. Okay, quadrants 1 and 4. So I want to look at the first problem. See how it has that sine to the negative 1? Okay, that's not an exponent. When you see that negative 1, what you say is you say this, inverse sine. Okay? All right. Now I've got inverse sine of 1 half equals theta. All right. Well, what does that mean? Well, here's what I want you to think. When you see this, this is what your brain needs to think. It actually needs to think of the sine of what angle equals one half. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's get out your unit circle, okay? Okay, so we got our unit circle. And by the way, we're going to look in quadrant one or four. Okay, well, where is, where is sine positive? It's only positive in quadrant one. All right, so let's find where is the sine 1 half. We know this is cosine and this is sine. So here we go. Sine was 1 half at 30 degrees, or if we're doing radians, pi over 6. Okay, now we just did that with the unit circle. So write yourself a note how we got that answer. Now, I want to show you how to get this answer with the calculator, okay? If you're going to use the calculator, tell yourself what you're doing right now, please. Okay, what you're going to do is you're going to type this into your calculator, okay? Now, how do we get that? If you notice above your sign key, it says inverse sign. So on your calculator, you go second function sign of 1 half. So I'm just going to do 0.5, and I hit equals, and there we go, 30 degrees. Okay? Alrighty. Now, if your um, author asks for radians, then of course you have to change to radians, and let's do this problem in radians, okay? So inverse sine of 0.5, okay? And there we go. So if you put pi divided by 6, you would get this answer, okay? All right, so let me go back here. Let me clear my calculator. I'm going to get back to degrees. There we go. All right. Now, let's look at the second problem. This is a little different. Arc sine of negative 
square root of 2 over 2 equals theta. All right, arc sine, ladies and gentlemen, is just another way of writing inverse sine, okay? So what I tell people is just cross that off and write inverse sine, okay? All right, so what does this mean? Well, this is what you need to think. You need to think this. The sine of what angle? So sine of what angle equals negative root 2 over 2. Now remember where we're at. We're either in quadrant 1 or quadrant 3. All right, so get out your um, unit circle. We know sine is negative in quadrant 4, and we're looking for negative root 2 over 2. Negative root 2 over 2, and here it is, negative root 2 over 2. So that is 315 degrees, or 7 pi over 4. Depending upon if we're in radians or if we are in degrees, okay? All righty. All right, now what we're going to do, we're going to tweak this answer a little bit. I want you to go back up here, and we're going to add this. All right, now, ladies and gentlemen, we got quadrant one, we got quadrant two. When you write your answers, they need to be between negative 90 and positive 90. All right, now if you're saying why, read your book, okay? So, here's what we've got to do. We've got to tweak this 315. 315 is not between negative 90 and 90. All right, well, 315, ladies and gentlemen, let's do this. Let's just subtract a circle, right? We'll use our idea of coterminal angles. So we've got 315 minus 360, and there we go. Now, negative 45 degrees is between negative 90 and 90, right? All right, now we've got to do the same thing with this. 7 pi over 4, we've got to subtract a circle. So we're going to subtract 2 pi. So what you're going to do in your calculator, you can just go 7 fourths minus 2, and then we'll tack on a pi. So let's do that. 7 fourths minus 2 is negative 1 fourth pi, okay, or I would probably just write it like this, negative pi over 4, okay? Alrighty, now that's our answer using our unit circle. Okay, now let's use our calculator. Some of you are going to want to use your calculator, some of you are going to want to use your unit circle, so I want to show you each way. Okay, so when we use our calculator, you're going to type in inverse sine, so let's do that, so inverse sine, okay. Now what I'm going to do, I think it's easier if I move this negative with the 2, so I'm just going to go like this, square root of positive 2. Now look at what my calculator did. It just put a parenthesis here, so i got to close that, and I'm going to divide by negative 2. Now I've got to close this parenthesis. And there we go, negative 45. So the calculator will give you the correct answer. All righty, so there we go, negative 45 degrees. And then, of course, that would be the same as negative pi over 4. Okay, last sign problem. Inverse sine of 3 equals theta. Okay, well, what are we thinking? It means the sine of what angle gives you 3? Now, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So let's, you know, let's make sure that we throw that 3 over 1 so we have um, our trig function. Okay, now go back. If you want to um, put this in your calculator, let's do that. Second function sine, right, inverse sine of 3. Uh-oh. All right, let's write this down. Our calculator just said domain error. Okay. Well, what does that mean? That means there's no solution. Why is this not working? 
All right, well, let's talk about this, ladies and gentlemen. If you have a right triangle, let's say this is our theta, opposite over hypotenuse. Isn't the hypotenuse of a right triangle always the longest side? So this is saying the hypotenuse is the short side. Well, that's impossible. You can't do that, all right? So that's why your calculator is saying domain error. They're telling you, hey, what you put in the calculator makes no sense. All right, now let's do some inverse cosine problems, okay? So get out your uh, highlighter. The range of the inverse cosine function is restricted to quadrants 1 and 2, okay? And when you write your answers, ladies and gentlemen, the answers have to be between 0 and pi. Okay, so let's, all right. Answers have to be between 0 and pi. All right, let's look at the first one. We are going to do inverse cos of negative square root of 2 over 2, and that equals theta. All right, so what are we thinking? What, is, what does this mean? Well, this is what it means. So we're thinking the cosine of what angle equals negative square root of 2 over 2. All right, now where are we going to be? Where's cosine? Let's remember this. Oh, ASTC. Where's cosine negative? Because we're just looking at two quadrants right now. So are we here or are we here? Well, we're definitely in quadrant two. All right. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, we can get out your unit circle. Okay, go to quadrant two. All right, we're looking at, remember, it's cosine and then sine. All right, we're looking for negative root 2 over 2. And here it is. All right, so we've got 3 pi over 4, or if we're in degrees, 135. So 3 pi over 4, or what was that? 135 degrees. All right, now, calculator people. All right, calculator people, you are going to type this into your calculator. Now, again, when I put this in my calculator, I like to move the negative down. So here we go. Clearing my calculator. So I've got inverse cos, square root of 2. Okay, now be careful now. I have to close this parenthesis. So there we go. I'm eventually going to have to close this one. Divided by negative 2, now I close my parenthesis, and I get 135 degrees. Okay? Alrighty. Next one, arc cosine of negative 2 equals theta. Okay, whenever we see arc cosine, all it means, it means inverse cos. Alright? Okay, so now we're thinking the cosine of what is negative 2? And again, I'm going to make this an adjacent over hypotenuse, okay? All right, now let's put this in our calculator, or you can use your unit circle. Let's see what you All right, I decided to use my calculator, so I typed this in my calculator, and I got domain error. Now again, why did your calculator say domain error. Well, it's telling you, hey, what you put in your calculator makes no sense. Here's why. Adjacent over hypotenuse. Can you have a hypotenuse of 1 and an adjacent side of 2? No, that makes no sense. So there is no solution. Okay, last uh, cosine problem. Inverse cosine of 0 equals what? All right, so again, we're thinking the cosine of what angle gives us zero? All right, so now remember where we have to be. We have to be, you know, up here. So let's get out our unit circle. Let's find where is the cosine zero? Right there. Cosine sine. Okay, so if we're in, in degrees, it's 90 degrees. If we're doing radians, we've got pi over 2.
And there we go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now we're going to try some problems with tangent. Now, the range of the inverse tangent function is restricted to quadrants 1 and 4. So we're going to be here and here. And our answers have to be written like so. We have to have our answers between negative pi over 2, or if you're thinking degrees, 90, and then up to 90 degrees. Or if you're thinking radians, it's pi over 2. So our answers have to be in this range. Okay, let's look at the first one. Inverse tangent of the square root of 3 equals theta. Okay, now what are we thinking? What does this mean? It means this. The tangent of what equals root 3. Now, you can put root 3 over 1 if you'd like. You know, whatever floats your boat. All right, now let's get out our calculators. Because as we know, um, the tangent function is not on our unit circle. So, what do we put in the calculator? This is what we put. So let's try it. Inverse tan of square root of 3. And I just got 60 degrees. Now, if we were going to write our answer in radians, that would be pi over 3. Okay, next one. The arctan of 0 equals theta. Okay, arctangent is the same as inverse tan, and that's the way I like to write things. There we go. Okay, so, oh, that was this was supposed to be down here. Let me try that again. So inverse tan of 0 equals theta. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so... Let's get out our calculator. You're going to go second function tan of 0. Let's do it. Second function of 0. And I got 0. So theta is 0 degrees. Or in radians, it would be just 0 radians. Alrighty. Last but not least, arc tangent of negative root 3 over 3 equals theta. Let's find theta. All right, well, first of all, arctan means inverse tan. Okay, so what is this asking? So, you know, you're thinking this way. You're thinking the tangent of what equals negative root 3 over 3? All right, where are you going to be? Where's tangent negative? Here or here? Definitely quadrant 4. Okay, so let's get out our calculator. Here we go. We're going to go inverse tan, square root of 3. I'm going to close my parentheses. Now, I'm going to move this negative down. So now I'm dividing by a negative 3, and I get negative 30. Okay, now negative 30 is the same as negative pi over 6. Okay, now did I write my answer correctly? Well, answers have to be between negative 90 and positive 90. Um, so let's see, is negative 30 between negative 90 and 90? It is. And what about negative pi over 6? Is it between these two values? Yes. Okay, so we just covered sine, cosine, and tangent. All right, now let's do some weird ones. Let's look at a secant problem. So we're going to do some practice problems from your book. We're going to do number seven. It's the arc secant of 2 square root of 3 over 3, and we have to find theta. Okay, so first of all, arc secant just means inverse secant. All right, okay, now if you have a secant cosecant or cotangent, you got to do a little more work. So, first of all, what does this mean? Well, it means the secant of what angle is 2 root 3 over 3. All right, now we don't have a secant button on our calculator, but we have a cosine key. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to take the reciprocal. Now let's make sure that you write down what you're doing. Okay, so the reciprocal of secant is cosine. 
Okay, now over here, let's take the reciprocal. So we're just going to flip this. There we go. All right, so now we're thinking the cosine of what gives us this value. All right, so to tell our calculator that we're looking for an angle, we've got to do our inverse cos. All right, so type this into your calculator. Okay, now this gets a little tricky, so just, here we go, nice and slow. Three. Three. Divided by, okay, two root three. So we got two square root of three. Okay, now my calculator, I gotta close this parenthesis, and now I gotta close this one. Now I hit equals. Okay, now it said domain error, and that is not what I got in my notes. So I'm going to pause the video, and I'm just going to try this again. Yeah. Okay, I was just putting this in my calculator, not getting the right thing, and I'm like, what am I doing wrong? It was all a parenthesis error. So let's look at this again. So inverse cos of 3 divided by, okay, here's what... I have to do on my calculator. I have to tell the calculator 2 root 3 is together, so I have to use parentheses. So you got to really slow down when you put this in your calculator. So here I go. I'm going to go parentheses, so that's that red one, 2 square root of 3. Okay, so now i got to close the parentheses around the 3, then i got to close this one that's by the 2, and then my original one. Oh my gosh, that was crazy. Okay, so 30 degrees is my answer. Or if we need radians, it is pi over 6. Okay, number 9 said the cosecant of, or the inverse uh, cosecant of 2 equals theta. Okay, now let's talk about this. This means the cosecant of what equals 2, because you always kind of flip-flop those two. All right, now cosecant. We do not have a cosecant button on our calculator, so it's kind of like this. We didn't have a secant button, so we had to take the reciprocal. So tell yourself what you're doing. You're going to take the reciprocal, so the reciprocal of cosecant is sine. Now the reciprocal of 2 over 1 is 1 half. All right, so now we have to do inverse sine of 1 half. Again, you can put this in your calculator or you can use your uh, unit circle and you will find out that our answer is 30 degrees or if you're doing radians, it is pi over 6. Okay, let's just do two more. Number 19, the arc tan of root 3 over 3 equals theta. Okay, arctan is the same as inverse tan. Alrighty, inverse tan of root 3 over 3 equals theta. So we're thinking to ourselves, the tangent of what equals root 3 over 3? So put that in your calculator. Now when you put it in your calculator, don't forget, calculator, this is what we put in our calculator. So inverse tan, and ladies and gentlemen, if you're in degrees, you should be getting 30 degrees. All right, last but not least, 23. Arc secant of negative square root of 2 equals theta. Okay, arc secant. It's inverse secant, right? Okay, what does that mean? It means the secant of what equals negative root 2. We don't have a secant button but we've got a cosine button. So tell yourself what you're doing. You're taking the reciprocal of both sides. Let's put this over 1 now. So 1 over negative root 2. All right. Now, if you're going to use your um, unit circle, I would rationalize this first. So cosine of theta is, let's see here, root 2 over root 2. So we'll have root 2 over a negative 2, okay? Or you can put this in your calculator. Now, if you're going to put it in your calculator, make sure you're doing inverse cos, all right? 
and you should get 135 degrees. Now, we got to hold on here. Is that acceptable for cosine? Let's see here. Cosine, cosine, cosine. For some reason, I'm thinking we've got to do something. Um, cosine, 135. Our answers have to be between 0 and pi, which is 0 and 180. Yeah, we're okay, aren't we? No, we're not. Wait, what was our answer? 135. Yeah, we're okay. All righty. So, ladies and gentlemen, just follow my work. Make sure you, you know, do all these steps, and you'll be just fine. Okay, bye-bye.